Welcome back to the Atlanta Falcons franchise, everyone. I'm your host, Husker Eurocat. We're finally set to start regular season play, beginning by visiting the Las Vegas Raiders. Even with an unseasoned group in the Falcons' offensive backfield, Atlanta is hoping they can start out the season with a win here today. Las Vegas has experience on their side, though, and the AFC Player of the Year in Josh Jacobs at halfback. Falcons' defense is going to have a handful with the combination of Jacobs and Kenyon Drake, along with plenty of talent in the receiving crew. Will Atlanta be able to keep up with the talent that the Raiders have coming into this game? Let's find out as the Falcons take on the Raiders here on the MMC Broadcasting Network. Isaiah McKenzie is back deep for the Raiders as Cade York gets this underway here in Las Vegas. McKenzie brings it out of the end zone, up the middle of the field, and it's tackled just past the 25. So it's first and 10 at the 27. And a three-yard pickup by Josh Jacobs gets it started. And out of the shotgun, the give is to Jacobs again, and he gets almost to the first down marker. But he's a yard shy, third and one. Car back to pass, lets it go, and it's complete over the middle to former Cowboy Michael Gallup, and that will give the Raiders a first down. Now a pass out to the perimeter, and out of bounds goes Darren Waller. Not sure why he could have easily had the first down, but it is... Falcon ball now Matt Corral completes his pass to James Cook up the middle and that is a seven yard gain a fake handoff and down goes Corral Trayvon Merrick takes him down at the 11 yard line and after a false start penalty the Falcons are now at the six that pass nearly intercepted by Ricardo Allen. And the Raiders get another shot. Carr back to pass. Throws complete over the middle. Inside the 40-yard line goes Michael Gallup. Now out of the shotgun. Carr throws again short. And that one is completed to Hunter Renfro for a nine yard pickup. Ball given to Jacobs and he has the first down inside the 25. Now from the 24, again to Renfro inside the 20 and that will bring up a third and two situation. Jacobs powering his way forward First down inside the 15. Now out of the eye formation, the give is to Alex Arma Jr. And he bulls his way to the five yard line. Now third and two. Carr back to pass has all day and completes it all the way to the one. And that is Arma again. Out of the shotgun, the give to Jacobs, touchdown Raiders. So with that one yard capper, the Raiders take the lead in the football game. Over the middle, Corral goes to Allison and he's out past the 40 for a first down. Now the give to Cook and he can't make it past the 45. Two yard gain, bringing up third and eight. The pass to Cook gets to the 49 and misses the first down opportunity. Now the Raiders from their own 15. Carr throws complete to Renfro and he takes it out past 
the 20 yard line. Six yard gain, second and four. The pass this time is complete. Renfro again going out of bounds just past the marker, but it's a first down. Now third and four. Play action pass, the throw, and it's complete on the sideline to Renfro for the first down. Just inside Falcon territory. Pass again, complete. Jacobs takes it out of bounds around the 45. That brings us to the end of the first quarter with the Raiders ahead, seven to nothing. Jacobs, the single back, the give to him, and he is taken down in the background. Tremaine Edmonds on the stop. Now at midfield, Carr. He's trying to find somebody open and throws it out of bounds. So the Falcons get the ball back at their own 19 and a half yard line or so. Corral, first down over the middle, Christian Kirk. Now he's the receiver that the Falcons got out of free agency, hoping to take the place of Calvin Ridley, but whether he's just not getting open or he's not being targeted um, frequently, that remains to be seen because that is the first time that I called his name. Cook takes it up the right hand. Hash mark for a first down to the 37 of the Raiders. And the Falcons are on the move. Handoff goes to Bryce Love up the middle. He's inside the 30-yard line for a seven-yard pickup. Third and three. The give is to Cook. Gets past the 30, but only a one-yard gain, and that brings up fourth and two, and the Falcons are going for it. Handoff. No, it's a play-action pass complete to Hurst. Inside the 25, first down, Falcons. Uh-oh, center Matt Hennessy is down, being escorted back to the locker room. That does not look good for the Falcons. So out of the eye, fake handoff. Corral takes off and jukes Casey Hayward and he's out of bounds at the 11 and a first down. Now all alone in the backfield. Corral to Gage, touchdown. Gage runs a simple slant pattern and nobody can keep up with him. And that ties the ball game up at seven apiece. Now back in the hands of the Raiders from their own 21. A huge hole and up the middle goes Josh Jacobs. A first down past the 37 yard line. Carr under center. Hands it off to Jacobs again and he gets out past the 45 yard line for a nine yard pickup. The Raiders gashing the defense of the Falcons right now. Renfro catches that one for a first down into Falcon territory. Just outside the 43, the give is to Jacobs again. A 10-yard pickup and another first down. Ooh, they did not give it to him. Second in inches and... Kenyon Drake picks it up anyway, taking it inside the 31. Drake gets the call again. Another big pickup all the way down to the 23. Now on third and one, the pass is broken up by Lucan. And uh, that brings on the Raider kicking team. And Matt Prater is good from 40 yards out. 
giving the Raiders the lead. After a Falcon three and out, the Raiders have it again. Jacobs taking the ball left and is stopped just as he gets past the 35 yard line. So third and three, Carr completes this one to Renfro, first down at the 45. Two minute warning is here and the Raiders have a three point lead. And the ball, I might add. Carr's pass is complete. Jacobs bounces off defenders and he gets the first down to the 43. Now Carr back to pass again. Completes this one to Drake at the 35 yard line. Second and two. A long pass and it's complete. Touchdown Raiders. It goes through the arms of Fabian Moreau and into the hands of Michael Gallup. And the Raiders are now up by 10. Corral out of the shotgun. Throws complete to Cook. Has the first down out past the 35. So now on second and 11. He passes again and it's incomplete. Third and 11. He's back to pass and completes this one. A spectacular catch by Geronimo Allison. And out of the shotgun again. The ball bounces off Denzel Perriman into the arms of Cook. And that is, ends up being a four-yard gain. The Falcons are now out of timeouts. Gets a completion to Pitts, and he doesn't get out of bounds. So the first half comes to an end with the Raiders leading 17-7. Now let's go to Eurocat Baby with a halftime report. Welcome to the Toyota Halftime Report. We'll get you back to the game in a moment. Kickoff Weekend 2022 is here, and with it a lot of teams are setting the tone for the rest of the season. None are more important to the Falcons, though, than their rivals within the NFC South. In Charlotte, the Panthers failed to win their season opener. Matt Stafford threw for 274 yards and two touchdowns as the Rams posted a two-point victory 19-17. In a game in Tampa, the Buccaneers have lost their season opener as well. The Seattle offense under Russell Wilson struggled just a bit, but in the end were able to post a late Nelson Aguilar touchdown pass to secure a four-point win on the road 22-18. The Saints have already won their season opener against the Bears in which Desmond Ritter threw for an NFL leading 358 yards and with it two touchdowns. I think Atlanta may find themselves with a tough rival in New Orleans this year. From the Atlanta front office, cornerback A.J. Terrell Jr. has been suspended by the NFL for a controlled substance abuse violation. He'll miss the first three games of the season. It most likely will be very interesting to see the battle between Fabian Moreau and Kendall Sheffield heat up as they try to make some headway for the lead as his substitute. Here in Atlanta, the Falcons find themselves down by 10 here at the break. Can Matt Correll press for a comeback or can the defense make a stand as they did on many occasions a year ago? Stay tuned to find out because we'll be right back with the second half. Welcome back to Allegiant Stadium here in Las Vegas. The Falcons are struggling at this point in the game. The Raiders hold a 10 point advantage and Las Vegas is looking pretty strong behind the running of the combo of Jacobs and Drake. The Falcons definitely need to step up their game, but can they get it done? Let's find out as we continue our coverage. The Falcons have it second and seven at the 27 yard line. 
Fake hand. No, he hands it off, and Cook takes it outside the 30-yard line. And it brings up third and three. And pass goes to Geronimo. Allison complete for the first down. Third and 12. Corral completes this one, and it's nowhere even close. Kyle Pitts made the uh, catch, but no first down. You see the numbers there on Derek Carr, 16 completions, 24 attempts, 158 yards, and a touchdown. Back to pass again, and this is complete to Renfro out past the 20-yard line. Second and six. Back to pass again. And this one is complete with a lot of room to run. Waller goes out of bounds at the 49-yard line. Now on second and 11. Carr throws complete, and it's another first down. Gallup catching this one. And after a false start penalty, a play action pass, and it's complete. Drake stopped by Rashawn Evans. Third and 12. Back to pass, completed by Carr. Gallup takes it inside the 40. But nowhere even close to the first down. Isaiah Oliver making the stop. Prater misses a what would have been a 53-yarder. And after a Falcon three and out, Raiders have it again. Carr going back and is taken down by Dante Fowler Jr. Now third and 23. The pass over the middle, complete to Waller. And Tremaine Edmonds stops that one before it ever gets close to the sticks. Now Matt Corral, 15 of 25 for 122 yards and a touchdown. Not what I would call an outstanding effort, but at least there's no interceptions. The throw... Complete to Cook and out of bounds. Well short of the marker. Now the Raiders with the ball at their own 20-yard line. Back to pass. Carr completes this one. Gallup for the first down at the 30-yard line. Wait, it's uh, second and two. Uh, the forward progress should have given him the first down, but Waller picks it up anyway. And he's out past the 35-yard line for the first down. Carr back to pass. And he cannot find anybody open. Fumbles the football. And I'm not so sure, but I think this one probably is going to be reversed. Well, first day we have to have the booth review, but... Uh, it almost looked like to me like he car was down. Yeah. Before the ball came out, his knee was on the ground. So I'm sure this one, yep, that's going to be Raider football at the 22. But it's third and 24. Rashawn Evans gets him again. And it's like fourth and forever, so I'm sure, yeah, they punt. Now off of a high snap, the ball is given to Cook, and he gets a seven-yard pickup to the 38 of the Raiders. Russell Gage picking up the first down inside the 30-yard line, and the Falcons are really benefiting from that excellent field position given to them by the defense. Another Russell Gage first down. And Corral runs it himself and slides down inside the 10-yard line for a 7-yard pickup. 
Now out of the eye. The give to Bryce Love. Powers his way inside the five. And after a false start penalty, the pass is complete. Kyle Pitts down to the one. So second and goal. Corral passes complete. Hayden Hurst touchdown. That brings the Falcons to within three points of the Raiders. And with their three and out, the Falcons have the ball again. It gets complete over the middle to Cook. A five-yard pickup and a long pass. A wide open Russell Gage. Touchdown, Falcons. A 67-yard strike. And the Falcons have taken the lead in this football game, 21-17. Now the Raiders with a completion to Gallup. I couldn't see his number there for a minute. That gives him a first down at the Falcon 46-yard line. Carr throws complete and a first down and tackled at the 35 yard line is Isaiah McKenzie. Car back to pass again, finds Darren Waller inside the 15 yard line, first down Raiders. That will take us to the two minute warning with the Falcons up by four points. <laughs> but the Raiders are inside the 15 yard line. First and 10. Carr throws complete to McKenzie, and that is down to the 11-yard line. Oh, my goodness. Jaquan Brisker, an interception in the end zone, ending what could have been the go-ahead score by the Raiders inside the two-minute warning. And this could end the football game if the Falcons play this one just right. Now, a run by Cook. Bounces off defenders and picks up nine. Second and one after a Las Vegas timeout. Bryce Love, first down and another timeout. Out of the eye formation. The handoff to Cook. Up the middle he goes, past the 30 yard line. Third and three. And he is stopped on third down, but Las Vegas is out of timeouts. And that is the end of the football game. The Falcons come back in this one and win by a score of 21-17 in the Raiders' house. What a fourth quarter for the Falcons' offense and the entire second half for the defensive unit. Keeping the Raiders from a single score was key to Atlanta's success in making a comeback. Matt Corral didn't have just a ton of yards, but he did have three touchdown passes. And get this, zero interceptions. I'll take that over a 450-yard effort and a loss any day of the week. James Cook didn't have a lot of yards on the ground, only averaging just over three and a half yards per carry. But here's the thing about this offensive unit versus the offense uh, of last year. Both Cook and Ely, in addition to being very fast, uh, they are receiving backs primarily, which means that Bryce Love will be the primary bang it up the middle guy and may likely get more yards on the ground than either Cook or Ely. That certainly was the case today although Ely didn't get in on the action out of the backfield. 
He was used primarily as a return specialist today and did a good job at that. Not great, mind you, but a good job. From looking at the stats of the receiving crew, you can tell that Corral did a really good job of spreading the ball around. One score came on a deep pass to Gage, but other than that, the majority of the completions were of the 20-yard and shorter variety. I counted at least five throwaways during the game, so he has a good pocket presence and he's ready to get rid of the ball if he needs to. Kind of a live to fight another day mentality, I think. On the defensive side of the ball, Edmonds and Aluakan take the tackle honors, so they're still a solid duo in the middle of the field. But take a look at the numbers for Isaiah Oliver. Life as the slot corner seems to be agreeing with him since he took third place in the tackle count. It was really nice to see the D-line members getting in on this sack action. Matabike and Kaminsky both had a part in the sack count, which is better than a year ago when it was primarily the linebackers that got the majority of the sacks. And finally, the rookie out of Penn State, Jaquan Brisker. That is first NFL interception, and it couldn't have come at a better time, stopping the first and goal effort of the Raiders to secure the win. They're going to need to take full advantage of these gains in talent because next up, they have a date on Monday night with Jalen Hurts and the Philadelphia Eagles. The Eagles totally dismantled Matt Ryan and the Colts 48-10 in which Ryan threw two interceptions that led to Eagle scores. The defense created four turnovers in the game and it all started up front with Grady Jarrett who was traded to them last season along with Brandon Graham on the other side and both Fletcher Cox and Javon Hargrave in the middle at defensive tackle. The linebacking crew as well as the safeties seem to be a soft spot, so I would think Corral would be targeting those areas in the passing game. One thing is certain. Atlanta will need to play another very clean offensive campaign or risk that Eagle D taking advantage of any miscues. That's going to do it for this episode of the Atlanta Falcons franchise on the MMC Broadcasting Network. After a very slow start to the ballgame, the Falcons made a stand in the second half both offensively and defensively. It allowed for a Raiders scoreless half of football as well as giving the offense opportunities to come back for the win. Will next week against the Eagles have the same results or will they give way to an outstanding Philly defensive front? To find out, be with us for a primetime showdown as the Eagles descend on the Falcons' home turf. And until then, for Eurocat Baby and the rest of the crew, this is Husker Eurocat saying so long for now and have a good day, everyone. <laughs>